omelette and Ronald. They just left McDonald's. They briskly walked home to eat, towards Mr. Scary's house. It was all run down and decrepit, its walls made of stone, its windows boarded up as it stood lone. It was the last house on the street, a field it did meet, with a sole ancient tree, withered and old. Mr. Scary's house, so fitting it was, its appearance made their skin crawl. The garden of the house, it drew their attention. It was something peculiar, unfamiliar, and gross. There was a smelly smell, a smell that smelled smelly, accompanying a slurping, squelching sound. From the thick bushes, and before you would know it, out pops M. Dub with his new pet pig. A cigar in its mouth, held there by indulgent golden teeth. It was awfully large, stinky and pink. It stood on hind legs, as if it were human. It had a smile so big, it seemed to give off several lumen. M. Dub spoke up, as if he were talking about his dog. I'd like to introduce you to my cute little hog. He's got an awful big appetite, and he's likely to bite. He's quite the guy, though. His logic is tight. Let me tell you too something. We've watched you for a while. Our little club here. We've got a plan to feed this pig in style. You two have food. What perfect timing. We'll need you nice and stuffed to get his appetite churning. Chopey out of nowhere came and cuffed the marching two. In their shock it happened quickly. There was nothing they could do. Grabbed by the bullies, they were taken to the brig. The inside of Mr. Scary's house seemed mighty big. The day had started nicely for Ronald and his friend, but now their day was sad and needed a good mend. Down through the jail door, Ronald Omelet got cast through. Ronald Omelet raised their voice. Whatever did we do? To get this treatment, cage and tox, that pig please dox, as if they were on 4chan's chan, for hacker talk, no jocks. The pig his big face lit up with utter glee. He laughed a laugh unlike any before. It had a deep bass roar. The pig spoke up. He meant it too. What it was he intended to do. I'll have your ears, those tasty nubs. I'll have Undub fry them until they're crunchy rind yums. I'll eat them at midnight. They'll be my hors d'oeuvres. I'm drooling just thinking about chewing their soft curves. There's nothing you can do. Your ears are at an endo. They'll be my delight, my climax, my crescendo. Oh my gosh, no! Omelette yelled in a fright. If you do that to us, I'd probably fight. Ignoring the warning, Piggy signaled to his crew to fetch the ears. They gathered hammers, shears, and screws. No, no, you do it wrong, the pig commanded on. The way to do this and do it right. You must use more sophisticated tools. I saw this program, a YouTube special. Two firemen rose to a rooftop. They used an axe, swung it well, and cut the building shell. You'll do it like that. I order you fools. The ones you chose were bad tools. Have it your way, boss, M-Dub said as he chuckled a bit. The way we do this is a method so you don't have a fit. The pig man stood there, with a smile so large, you'd mistake it for the moon, a crescent next to the stars. His pig face glowed, as he was the opposite of bored. He spoke up once more, his boar voice again roared. Prepare the trumpets for this glorious occasion. The way they're sure to scream will be a delightful exploitation. Before your ears are mine, I'll be sure to mention... This is going on Instagram. My followers' glee will surely rise to another dimension. Now, you imbeciles, you lazy henchmen, make yourself useful and fetch a lobe. Smoke it with spices. It'll add to the flavor. Do it now. I'm not asking for a favor. The two servant men approached with haste. They knew the pig man would become moody if he didn't have a taste of the poor innocent children's parts of their face. Stepping forward was M-Dub, a brooding aura surrounding, he and Chopey with a big axe in hand. Ronald and Omelette backed up, huddled together, into the nearest corner, 
as the room suddenly felt smaller. Ronald froze in place, overcome with fear. Was this really happening? Was this the last time he would hear? Separated with force, Ronald was shoved away, while the two aggressors chose Omelet as their first prey. Ronald screeching loudly as the axe came down on Omelette. The trumpet sound was strong as his ear's doom was met. Ah, oh, son, my ear! Omelette cried out as the blood dripped down his neck. How is this even possible? My ears are made of internet! The pig, the fat one, his eyes did glow as the juices of victory drizzled down to the flow. You're next, red-eyed one! Pig Lord said with intent as Ronald just stood there frozen from the unrelent. Writhing in pain, Omelette held his hand to his wound as the henchman grabbed the ear from the bloodstained ground. Ronald glanced over and saw the pig smiling as he held up his smartphone, snapping selfies and posting. The axemen, berserked, shifted their evil gaze to the next, the smaller, the blonde-haired, cowering, young, perplexed. Ronald was grabbed, his both arms restrained, if no bell chimed soon he'd lose his ear just the same. Chopi clenched harder as Ronald squirmed to and fro. This is it. My ears are done. My healing will soon be none. Perfect, you two. A job well done. One ear for now. Let's savor the fun. Saved for the moment, Ronald sighed with relief as the pigmen blabbed on, commanding his accomplices. I'll have you two roast it. Then I'll nibble it with fine wine. It's time for my nap. When I awake, it'll be time to dine. Off he went to his chambers upstairs. The henchman followed after, locking the door on the scared. A moment passed before Ronald gained composure. Worried about Omelet, he sprinted right over. Your ear, it's gone. This is awfully wrong. In times like this, I want to sing you a song. What's that? An impaired Omelet questioned loudly. I can't hear you on that side. The sound is all cloudy. Ronald teared up, hit with reality. If this keeps up, our hearing will become a fatality. I know, this is bad. We have to do something. We must escape this place now. Don't worry, little dumpling. Fear not, young boy. Omelette bravely said, as sweat dripped down his forehead and his thoughts full of dread. I'll protect your face if it's the last thing I do. I have an idea to save our lives and our ears too. Some time passed as the captives whispered their plan. Their time was limited because the pig man slept light. His dreams filled with Helix, Tragus, and Auditory Metus. Little did he know, he was in for a long night. Omelette and Ronald, their plan now discussed. They waited no longer, for them action was a must. Upon Omelette's shoulders, Ronald stood tall and strong. He reached for the ceiling, his arms surprisingly long. He grabbed the rocky texture. It was dry and crumbly. Ronald couldn't hold well, and his hands were all fumbly. A large brick fell down as one lost integrity. It crashed against the floor with an echo sounding loudly. M-Dub, alerted, notified his partner. Let's check on those goons. An escape would be a disaster. Into the cell, the two guards burst open the door when all they saw was emptiness with a few bricks on the floor. What have we done? We've failed our bus miserably. His trinkets of taste have disappeared without a trace. But just as the two started whimpering in failure, a puny pebble plummeted down, struck the ground, and made a paltry sound. Curiously, the guards both looked up to a shocking sight of Ronald and Omelette. Hanging from the tall ceiling, Ronald's arms did strain as Omelette held on to his trembling legs. No! Omelette yelled, followed by Ronald letting go their kinetic energy building as they did go. M-Dub and Chopi in the direct path of the falling duo's feet, shoulders, and ass. The guards tried to duck, but it was already too late. They were pushed to the ground with a loud thump. The two had taken the bait. Ouch! Chopi cried, as M-Dub did too. On the floor, they were knocked down, shaken. Boo-hoo! Atop the patrolman, R&O landed softly. They got up in a flash, dashing quickly for the entry. The timing was just right for them to skip through the door, while the guards on the floor got up slowly and sore. The door was shut tight and its lock set promptly. The guards were now angry but locked away safely. You won't get away! Amdub piped in a fury. Hog gets what he wants! Chopi added with severity. 
Ignoring the threats, Omelette leading the way, ran up the winding stairs and away from the fray. But right as they reached the pinnacle step, the scariest of sights for their eyes was met. Pigman, the pinky, the stinky fat hog, stood there smiling with a look that would scare the meanest dog. What a blunder you made, you stupid dumb blip. I'll take you both on, you can forget about that split. The two weren't having it, their exit was just ahead. They didn't formulate a plan just to get thrown back into a pen. They were getting out there, one way or another. If they could only get past, they'd be free at last. Pigman stood there, with hooves on his hips. His face with his sneer, drool on his lips. Omelette's expression changed from scared to stern. He was disgusted by the pig. His appetite was absurd. Omelette began to trot towards the filthy sweet day. One foot after another and building momentum, he let out a yell, increasing his contravention, charging at full speed like a football rusher. Approaching there fast, he would have rammed the hog if it weren't for the pink one's sidestep seconds before the flog. Omelette not expecting the irritarian's deception, stumbled and fell, slid and rug burned well. The boar calmed quickly and eyed Ronald next. His sneering face suddenly became an angry mess. He ran towards the small one, who was at the top of the stairs. Ronald's fear was building, but he wasn't about to be impaired. Remembering what just happened, Ronald dropped out of the way. Of the pigman's flying jump, which surely would have knocked Ronald away. The pigman, he was shocked, thinking for sure that Ronald would have been clocked. Regardless, he fell down the long flight of stairs, crashing all the way down, down to hell. A sigh of relief. The two captives shared. For sure, three ears this night would be spared. Both getting up from their stressful situation, they walked towards the door, no longer with intimidation. They grabbed the knob, turning it right. Then left, then right. This couldn't be right. The door didn't open. It was locked from within, with a key they didn't have. They couldn't find. It must be with them. Anxiety was an instant as they checked other means of getting outside through windows and things. The house was old, rustic and bold, yet no place was vulnerable, broken, or exposed. Panic rushed over them as they knew this wasn't the end of a night of fear, lust, hatred, and crooked men. Just as they tried the door one more time, an eerie sound came in from behind. They turned, slowly, with the feeling of ice in their spines, to see a figure of darkness, battered, broken, and still alive. In a stance of ferocity, the swine's aura exploded with madness. You two don't know the first thing about my avarice. With the horror in sight, the two battered on the door, their desperate attempt at liberty was sure, but wasted it was because the pig brought back up. He had opened the cell door, his servants with him once more. Enough of that, humans! The pig man yelled, irritated. This whole house was built to keep you incarcerated. Tired, defeated, the two had little choice to give up, surrender, their morales crushed by the pig's voice tossed into the cell with a bump and a thud. On their bottoms they bounced to the cold dungeon level. Their hopes were broken, their thoughts of freedom misspoken. The two waited there, cried, and began to despair. Moments passed as the whimpering two had not an idea about what to do. Then from the stairway they heard a set of steps. Then emerging from the door was the pigman and his pets. The pig wasn't happy. His remarks explained, You ruined my meal, you fools, when your flea was foiled. While you tried to split, my ear overcooked and spoiled. I can't eat that one. You imbeciles, I have my standards. I'm awfully famished now. The young one, his tenders. With that, the henchman emerged from the rear, holding again the axe and in M-Dub's pocket some leftover shears. As the two approached Ronald, he stood prepared for the last moment of audio he thought he would ever hear. But just when he thought his senses would be lost, he remembered the skills he had learned from Attack on Titan's Trost. 
Even without maneuver gear, he knew the trick was balance. To maneuver quickly, with ferocity, to dismember an aggressing foe. Hours he had spent playing the cult hit AOTTG. He had learned a few things about grapples tied to strings. Although the situation differed greatly, Feng Li, the game's creator, had made a similarity. In their midst, a towering foe. Not in size, but tenacity. These monsters had to go. Before the aggressors were able to restrain, Ronald dashed for the shears in the pocket of the mane. Before their reaction, Ronald snapped the scissors in two. He now had two knives, which were sharp and true. By now the henchmen were aware and rose the large axe. The pigmen's eyes were wide and shouted a command in tense. Dead or alive, I'll have his ears either way! Just as Ronald slashed his first victim's nape with his spades. He was fast. He was agile. His movements precise. The axe fell down as he made his next slice. Too dispatched as the axe fell calm, its gripping hands released. Ronald eyed the pigman next. It was time to make him deceased. The pigman realized the danger he was in, backed up and went for the door. Omelette, alert from the attacks and the gore, jumped to his feet and charged like a sportsman once more. As the dead man's axe smashed against the floor, the two ran wild for the slime ball bore. They had to get to the pig, pronto, before their cell door closed for good. Around the door, the pig maneuvered, closing it quickly as the two ran unhindered. A millimeter more is all it would take for the door to be locked, the heavens forsake. But springing forward, Amalette, making sure the end of this was a sure bet. Soaring through the air, a victorious tackle stopped the door from closing and their freedoms hosing. The pig was knocked back, his butt on the steps. As Ronald came through, stepping over Omelette, the pigman stared up at Ronald's glaring face. Pig wasn't about to lose to this ingrate, this disgrace. Two meals spoiled, he wouldn't lose a third, even if the intended end was not for Ronald's murder. Ronald stared profoundly at the pig on the stairs, silent and cautious, yet alert and prepared. If a capture was possible, it would be preferred. He waited for the pig to offer any last words. The entitled pig muttered nothing. He saw the ears as dead to rights. His ferocity returned as he eyeballed the delights. This young one's ears, pig could taste them already. He lifted his hooves for the battle of mom's spaghetti. He sprung up, unafraid, berserked, and raged. His supper tonight would be a feast to be made. But just as he jutted his sharp hooves forward, a beautiful parry, slice and cherry. Colored blood from the pig, Ronald was the victor. The two now at ease, with their safety guaranteed. A moment of calm passed before hearing a growl from their stomachs. Too agitated prior to eat their french fries. Looking down at their feet was a supersized pork prize. Bacon was prepared and gobbled in celebration. The fresh food in their tummies changed their outlook on the situation. Although the setting was odd, they were thankful for the feed. Omelette piped up. This was just what I need. From the corpses in the basement, a key was fetched. The front door opened and an escape was met. Outside the house, not a single suspicion from passers-by about what happened in this mission. The thick exterior and soundproof walls meant no one outside would have a clue what happened in Mr. Scary's halls. The two headed home, stuffed and with grins. The night had been dangerous, but they were still live-in. As they walked down the street, they saw a number of people. For some reason, they both thought they all seemed pathetic sheeple. Ignoring the thought, they continued home. They arrived at their door. Sitting there was their friend Stallone. Hey, how you doing? Where have you been? The two looked at each other, then back at him. Oh my gosh! What happened to your ear, Omelette? Saying nothing, the two weren't ready to talk about it just yet. You guys have been missing for half of the night. I started getting worried. You gave me a fright. While this was true, the two couldn't say it. They thought they would downplay their night of enslavement. But right as they opened their mouths to speak, they felt a tingling on their tongue. 
although it was weak. Was it the bacon? Was it tainted with disease? The two thought in silence, until one of them sneezed. It was probably nothing. Coincidence. It's cold. Let's go inside and play cards. A dog bit my ear off. Hoping the story would be sold. Concerned, Stallone stared, then laughed a big laugh. Oh my brother, that sucksers! I'm awfully saws! As Stallone chuckled, R and O were oddly drawn to Stallone's jawbone and ears moving along. Ignoring again the strange feelings they felt, they let their friend in, and together they all broke. Open a pack of cards, playing for hours while they spoke. The night went on, and this itching sensation kept growing stronger until it became a voration. Are you hungry, Stallone? Ronald asked his dear friend. Not at all, bro. It's only past ten. Ronald, suddenly feeling awkward, looked to the purple-haired loan. Drool ran down his chin. He was immersed in stare at their friend, Stallone, sitting across the card battle zone. Ronald couldn't help it. He was overcome as well. A sensitivity so strong to the ears, large and long. Stallone looked up from the cards in his hand, only to see his two friends zoned out, mouths open, spanned. Stallone felt embarrassed as the two stared at him. Guys, why are you staring? I know I'm about to win. Ears, Omelette said in a trance, as a blushing, bewildered Stallone tried to make sense. Ears, Ronald shouted at the top of his lungs, as both Omelette and Ronald sprung at their startled front. They pounced, they reached, they grasped, they tore, while from their hands projected Curse of the Swine and Fleshbag Marador. This is the moment this tall tale ends. Make sure to use caution when mingling with friends. Go you this night on All Hallows' Eve. Be mindful of acquaintances who have acquired the pigman's greed. You ought be advised on those that would feast on your ears. The sickness is strong, its influence deep, its reach unstoppable, even in your sleep. Take this advice when going outside. Conceal your ears from evil pig zombies gazing eyes.